everybody. Look down below. See that red subscribe? Click it. Thank you so much. Welcome to Shannon Confidential. I am Shannon, your host. And Shannon Confidential is a podcast about life, love, and everything in between. And boy, do we have an in-between for you today. Now, Lorena Troy, who is the owner of Pure, will be the logo you see behind me, and she'll go into all of her beautiful, beautiful cosmetics and, and soy candles, all natural, uh, Pure says it all, a company that she started by herself in her kitchen five years ago. And again, I'll let her go into that. That's the good part of her story. The tragic and horrific part of her story, what was happened to her baby when he was first born, uh, just a few months old, um, the misdiagnosis that, that rocked her family is horrific at best. Um, and what happened to her son and her other child uh, as an infant and a newborn is something that no parent should ever have to go through. Uh, it should never happen, period. This is for lack of a better word, corruption and um, people covering their butts and how it tore family apart. But I have to tell you, Lorena came through and she's gonna tell you the whole story about what happened, uh, how she fought back, how she had never, never gave up hope for the truth, how she found it, how she's changed laws for, for other parents out there so this doesn't happen again. And uh, just to share her story. So if there's anybody else out there, just to let you know, never lose faith, never lose hope. There are miracles and uh, never give up. But I can't wait for you to meet Lorena. She's a truly remarkable woman. And what she's done with her life um, is extraordinary. And it's an honor to actually have, have met her. And I can't wait to share her with you. Here she comes next. Okay, everybody, here she is, Lorena Troy. I cannot wait for you to meet her, meet everything that she does and has been through this woman, I, and, and she just looks remarkable. So obviously something about her products is doing very well for her, but she's an incredible woman um, all around, and uh, I'm gonna give her the floor so she can tell you what she's doing now and what she's been through and where she's going. So Lorena, welcome to Shannon Confidential. Thank you so much. I love your podcast. I've been watching episodes and I love it. Thank, oh, thank you so you. much. Yes. <laughs> that means a lot. <laughs> thank you. Um, I well, see you have some of your products, uh, uh, Pure Beauty by Lorena. So uh, I, in the intro, I told everybody how I've been using, a, first of all, thank you so much for sending me the products that you did send. I've already used your, the facial cleanser, I've used the moisturizer, I've used the mask, I've used the chapstick, I use the lip gloss, the candle is lit, it smells amazing. So tell everybody how it got started, you know, bring us through this, this amazing product line that you have. Sure, thank you. Um, well, about... I think it was about five and a half, six years ago, I bought a candle from a store and I realized whenever I lit that candle in my house, I was having some side effects, like I had a sore throat and a slight headache. So I was wondering, you know, what, what exactly is in candles? Like what are the ingredients? So I did some research and I found that most candles are actually made from paraffin wax and paraffin is derived from, from petroleum. And what happens is there's toxic carcinogens that get released into the air that could potentially potentially cause uh, lung cancer and asthma. So but that was- paraffin when you get a manicure sometimes? <laughs> Don't you dip it? Wow, we should be dipping in soy. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's it's different. I heard, I was reading like it's different when you, you know, when it's in something that you dip into as in when you light it and it, you know, burns into the air. But yeah, it'd be awesome to have soy wax, you know, when you go to the, get a manicure and everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was very concerning for me because, you know, I have children and pets and everything, and, you know, for my family. So I, I did a bunch of research. I wanted to make my own candles. Um, that way I know exactly what's in them. I tested different waxes, such as like beeswax, soy wax, 
And I, f I love uh, soy wax because it's vegan. It's, um, it's, a it's a vegetable, you know, it's natural and no carcinogens get released into the air. So okay. I started my own candles. <laughs> Thank you. I started making my own candles and uh, family and friends would visit and they're just like, oh my gosh, I love your candles. You need to, can we, can we buy some? You need, you need to make these available to other people. Um, so then I started like years later, I just launched our, our own product line. And how did, I have to tell you, I'm going to interrupt for a second. I know the scent, uh, Maui Beach Sunset. How do you come up with the scents? <laughs> well, um, there, I try different, I, I mix different things together and I try different scents. Um, my dad's from Hawaii, so I really love those tropical scents. Yes. That's what, the Maui Beach Sunset it has three different colors. Uh, it, reminds, it reminds me of the, the sky and you know, like a sunset. That's why there's three different layers of colors in that one. So do you, do you, is it oils that you drop in? What gives it the, the, the smell? It's a pre, it's a premium fragrance oil. And I also use essential oils. Essential oils are very beneficial. They can help, um, calm, like bringing, calming, uh, like feelings, like, mm -hmm. um, just Great. like, candles. I love lighting candles. It, it brings a nice, a nice, calm, peaceful atmosphere always have them lit in my house always it just goes <laughs> yeah it's an amazing spa experience and then with everything going on in the world i wanted to make some products that bring smiles and happiness to people and with my friends and family when they come over i give them facials you know we're lighting candles doing Lucky family and friends <laughs> even on zoom I have, I have friends that are in like tennessee and florida so i was like hey let's uh, let's have a skincare routine so i i sent some candles to them and so that was really fun that it was it's a great way to connect you know even though we can't be together in the same state that's a great idea i haven't done a spa day or facials uh over the internet with friends that are far away that's a great idea thank you and that's why i launched uh, my own candle line and we also have skincare and cosmetics i wanted to focus on natural ingredients and with skincare it's important as well to have natural ingredients because that way you don't have to worry about using harsh chemicals on your skin I have very sensitive skin ever since I've been using our skincare line. My skin has been flawless, no breakouts. There's been a diminishing fine line. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I just wanted to make some products avail available to other people. Um, these are some healthy vegan products that I love. They're natural and it's like an amazing spa experience. Yes, and I have to tell you, I'm. you can go into detail on the facial cleanser that you sent me, and I too have extremely sensitive skin and very oily skin. So depending on what I put on it and wash my face with, I could get a rash or it gets very, very red or it becomes even more oily or, I mean, you name it, it'll happen, especially with a moisturizer. I have to be so careful because I have oily skin naturally. So when you sent the facial cleanser and the moisturizer, I thought, all right, I'm gonna try but, you know, I don't know if this is going to work out because I have such sensitive, oily skin. First of all, your cleanser made me feel so clean, not stripped of my natural oils or anything clean, but so clean. And your moisturizer went on and dried so quickly. And I didn't feel like I had an extra layer. It was incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I love that it, it gets deep into the pores and cleanses your skin. And then it doesn't feel heavy or block your pores at all. No. It's not, you know, some of the ingredients are um, <clears throat> in, the, in the facial cleanser, we have activated charcoal, green tea, vitamin B5, vitamin C. And then in the bergamot uh, moisturizer, we have vitamin E, coconut oil, aloe, and um, in our vitamin C serum too. This one is awesome if you're out in the sun. Oh, uh, I love vitamin C. I love it. Oh, I love it. It makes my skin have this like youthful, healthy glow. Doesn't it? Just you put it on and you just feel like a burst of like a burst of sun. It just yes. feels great. It does. Well, you've you've nailed it with some of your products and your the the lip gloss that you sent is beautiful. Thank you. Have you noticed it tastes like it, there's cocoa butter in there, so it has this uh, flavor and scent of chocolate. <laughs> yeah, it's it. Yeah, and your strawberry chapstick that was good. <laughs> and a great beauty tip too is one of my friends told me this. I didn't even realize it. Um, lip, liquid lipstick can kind of run a little bit, so it's great to use the lip balm first and then put the liquid lipstick over it. Holds it in place. Your friend is very smart. That's what I do every day. I will now use 
my pure <laughs> beauty by Lorena chapstick. And then I put my gloss on it. It actually does. She's at, she's 100% right. Thank you. And the chapstick is, it's a uh, certified organic as well. So it's. Yeah. I saw that on the label. All natural. Yeah. Yes. You've done a beautiful thing. So, so what are the products you have in front of you? Do you, can you teach us anything with that? Yes. Uh, with our skincare, I didn't always know, you know, it gets kind of intimidating, a little bit scary, like which, which products do you use first? So the, the most benefits that you could get out of your skincare is you usually start with a cleanser. And then if you have a serum, there could be multiple serums. Um, this one's more of a liquid serum. And then there's, there's like a thicker liquid serums. You usually go with the thinner liquids first, and then you end with the thicker liquids. And that's how you get the most benefits out of your skincare. And then you finish up with a moisturizer. Yeah, so you just mentioned you could, what I have heard, and you'll be able to clarify this, um, you could layer serums. You don't yes. layer moisturizers. So you could use more than one serum. And as you say, put more liquid to, uh, you know, consistency go greater with, but then finish with your moisturizer. You wouldn't layer different moisturizers. Yes, exactly. Okay. <laughs> That's great. So what kind of serums do you have? We have a vitamin C serum, and then we also have an age defying serum. Ooh. So working on later on introducing some eye serum um, and another moisturizer, but it's it's a process. We're we're slowly gr growing, adding more products. I'm really excited that we're going to be launching our new fall scents um, sometime this week. One of our new fall scents is going to be this pumpkin pecan waffles. Oh. This one definitely smells like pumpkin. I was making this, and it smells like ooh, it smells like pumpkin with a little bit of a spice, and it smells sweet as well. Oh, and that's it, lovely. And it's also a three-wick candle. Okay. And all, all of our candles are 100% soy wax. You might see like soy blends out there, and I would be kind of careful with that because sometimes there's paraffin wax in those as well. Bars are 100% soy wax, and then we also use a natural cotton wicks. Oh, okay. And then this one, this one I had, I absolutely had to introduce it with our new fall scents. I tried this one. It's sea salt and orchid. Ooh. And smells amazing. I don't even know how to explain it, but like if you go into an upscale spa or um. it's a very uh, like fresh and sweet smell. It's, it smells so good. It's sea salt and orchid, so it's going to be launched with our new fall scents as well. And I have an amazing graphic design team that works with me to design our labels. It's beautiful. That I, I, it's, I love the, you know, the way you just, you didn't like the way the candles were burning. You didn't like the way it made you fit, feel. You researched it. You come up with a way to make candles. You start doing it in your house. That grows into uh, other products. And now you're going into fall scents and more products. I just love the the way you've just said, okay, you didn't just go, all right, well, I don't know. I don't know what to do with these candles. They may not make me feel good. You actually solved an issue and then you're, you're paying it forward by, and again, everybody, everything uh, Lorena has talked about, I'll make sure that uh, down below in the show notes, you're linked up to everything that is said today. Um, I just think it's really, really a wonderful thing because so many people don't solve the problem that they have and you did. Yeah, and well, you know, with everything going on in the world, I, re I think everyone needs something to just calm, just calm and relax and um, de-stress and rejuvenate. I, I myself, I take on so much and I'm constantly, you know, trying to reach goals, getting things done. But I also learned that, you know, it's important to have a healthy balance, that you also have to have self-care and rest and relax so that way you can accomplish more. If, otherwise, you feel burned out and just completely exhausted all the time. So there's times where I literally have to force myself and say, okay, <laughs> I'm going to just relax. Like at night, I love burning a candle and watching a comedy or something like that. Super, super relaxing. And the essential oils that we use have health benefits as well. Like lavender, it helps you to calm and relax. Mm -hmm. And just the scents, it's just so awesome and relaxing. And, and reju you could rejuvenate and just feel so um, like, I, a, like a spa experience. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't like the spa, right? No, I am a true believer. I come home. And I will have a candle, and I will not actually have your candle, burning from the moment I get home. Because I want to get, even if I'm working, and I'm working out of the home, I still want to get into a peaceful place even when I'm working. There's just too much stress in the world. And you can even still calm down 
while you're working. You can just take it easy, it just move a little slower. And the one thing you said, you know, taking care of yourself and 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 regenerating so you have the energy to then take care of your family, friends, your business, whatever it is that you're doing, your pets. Um, the one thing that I don't think a lot of uh, I, people, men and women, I don't care who you are, need to be reminded of, it is okay to take care of yourself, to put yourself first, because you are a better person when your strength and you're ready and your mindset is there you're better for at others when you take care of yourself first and there's no selfishness in that and i wish more people like you you light the candles you have you what you have a routine if more people did that and gave their bodies a chance to rejuvenate and, and just find peace and use the natural oils in the sense that just take your brain to a, a happier place um i just think we'd all be better off yes for sure <laughs> Yeah, sure. so I'm, I'm a big believer. I even, I used your mask last night. I went to my happy place. I had a glass of wine, got ready for the show today. I feel great. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so awesome. I do the same as well. I'm, I have three kids and it's awesome to take a little break sometimes too. I have my candles and my skincare and it's just, it's so relaxing and we definitely need that to just, it's like that saying you can't pour from, from an empty cup. Yeah. Yeah, you can't, your car doesn't run on an empty uh, empty engine, you know, you, you got to fuel up. And sometimes fuel is just peace and quiet and, and the smell yeah. of a beautiful candle and a facial. You know, it doesn't have to be a whole bunch, but boy, does it benefit. It does. It really does. <laughs> well, I'm very happy for you, Lorena. And, and again, everybody, I will link you up to her whole product line. Um, again, I used her facial cleanser, her uh, moisturizer, her mask. The lip gloss, the chapstick, and the candle, and I could not be happier. So I strongly recommend it. Thank you so much. Our, our skincare line is Pure Beauty by Lorena and our cosmetics. And then our, our candles are Lorena candles. Um, it's just, it's funny because like when you go and try to think of a business name, all the names that I was trying to think of were already taken. So that's why my name is in it. Um, good thing my name isn't that common. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> And my candles, I'm like, what do I call it? At first, I was like, maybe inspire candles because you feel inspiring. But then, you know, all those names were taken. And so one of my friends was like, hey, why don't you just call it, call it Lorena candles? Like, since your name is isn't that common, so it's it was it's quite the journey, but it's been fun. And my kids also help with some of my scents. I'm like, hey, you know, what do you think would smell good? And they they absolutely love my my apple candles and these new fall scents that are that we're about to launch next week as well. Oh, I cannot wait to look next week. I'm going to be all about it. I love fall. My daughter loves fall. She steals my candles all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we're just waiting for on the label. So it should be hopefully next time next week when they come in. Okay. All right. So when I went on your website, I could see your product line and your candles. Is Are are they still together on the website or are you, are you going to have two separate ones? Yes, they're all together. I okay. also have um, one of these. This is... We also have uh, hand-blown glass candles. These are, are beautiful. Well, they add home decor, and um, I just love the glass. And all of them are uniquely made, so none of them are exactly the same. And I also have one. I don't have it with me right now, but it reminds me of like a mermaid tail. It's like it's shiny blue and pink and green. It's beautiful. Oh, I will be all about that. I'm going to look at that. Me and my girlfriends, we are all sworn mermaids. So I know they hope they're not watching this. Well, I hope they are watching this, but they can't. They have to close their ears. I know what I'm getting them <laughs> for the holidays. <laughs> That's awesome. And we do have spa baskets as well. So I was like, hey, I was thinking of like ideas to bring the spa home or on vacation. So okay. we have little spa baskets. There's like a, a, a robe that you wrap around and it has Velcro. And then there's candles and skincare in there as, as well. And in some, um, we have uh, like a facial, it's a sponge called a natural contract sponge. It's made from a natural contract root. Okay. And that is awesome as well to use with the skincare. Well, I, I believe you because the few things that I have tried, I've been blown away. So I, I'm going to try everything. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. No problem at all. So tell us, uh, you mentioned you had kids and, and, and you want to be healthy and a, bring a healthy home. I have to ask you, Lorena, you, uh, I can see why you need peace. You you haven't had an easy start with, with your kids. So do you mind if I jump into sure that part? Just because I just, it, it makes what you do now even more spectacular. And I'm sure at the time that was the last thing on your mind. 
but the, what you do with your product lines and and with the candles and and your cosmetics and and the different things that are coming and how your pro company is growing and falling and expanding makes what you came from even more extraordinary that that you do this so it's just a bigger pat on the back for you thank you i really appreciate it um well about in 2015 i had my second son um and we went through so many challenges uh just because uh let's see when he was born he was showing some some symptoms and we kept taking him to the doctors and we couldn't find out you know what was wrong uh he kept being misdiagnosed um so my my husband actually took him to the children's hospital um and they just said hey you know do we're gonna do an mri on his head just um because his head's gr consistently growing um we noticed it was consistently growing from birth and um <clears throat> So he, he took him to the hospital to have images taken. When you say growing, not to interrupt you, when you say growing like at a, at a, a, a an increased rate or a section of his head, what do you mean by growing? Yeah, his, his head was just getting larger from birth, like gradually. So we noticed that and we told his pediatrician, she said, you know, oh, maybe he just needs more tummy time because maybe it's just a little flat in the back. Okay. Um, he was also vomiting and sometimes he would be a little lethargic. So. We couldn't really figure out what was wrong. We kept taking him into the hospital, into his, his pediatrician, and they just said, you know, maybe he just has a stomach bug, and they just released him. So um, at his, I think his four-month checkup, his pediatrician just said, you know, take him in to get an MRI. Um, he should be fine. He's not sick or anything. Um, but um, my husband took him, and they found fluid in his head, and right away they just jumped to conclusions and uh, um, wrongfully accused and assumed the worst possible thing. They found fluid in his head and they tried to say that it was shaken baby syndrome. And um, we were just completely shocked because, you know, I, told, I went to the hospital because I was feeling sick at the time. So I went to the hospital and I met with a pediatric neurosurgeon and I told them, you know, no, no one has ever hurt my son in any way. Could this be something else like a medical condition? And he said, yes, but since he's a baby and can't talk, we're just going to go with abuse and walked away. And um, ever since then, just, we just wait, wait a second. So you question if it could be something else. I, I, I honestly have chills across, like down my arms. You're in the hospital. You just have an MRI on your your, your baby's head. Yeah. They find fluid. If that's not scary enough for a mom, you talk to an actual doctor and ask, could this be something else? He tells you yes. Yeah. But because your baby can't talk, we're going to go with shaken baby and just walks away? Yeah, he said, since your baby can't talk, we're just going to go through the system and walked away. And I was just like, what? And I asked for an opinion. I was like, can we have a second opinion? He's like, no, we don't feel that's necessary. So and you, we, and you couldn't demand a second opinion. You can't say we're leaving with my child and we're going to go to a different house. Like, no. When you, when you do that, when you do that I've, I've seen children will be taken away quickly because they they don't want it's what they say it's it's just it's a horrible yeah i horrible. could see they're like no they're gonna go doctor shop or we'll never see this family again and now we got to save this baby yeah and, and if it is something else then malpractice lawsuit so it's it's just it's it's just crazy so um <sighs> we were completely devastated um and just in shock because yeah we were doing everything that we were supposed to do to kept taking my son to see his pediatrician and to that same hospital. They were asking for help. You, you noticed it. You're the mom. You noticed it. And no yeah. doctor would be like, yeah, maybe you're right. No, they kind of just like blew you off until finally. Yeah, it, it was a horrible situation to have to be in. Um, and then after that, everyone, the doctors and nurses treated us not well at all because you know as you can assume if someone thinks your baby's hurt they just treat you horribly um yeah, so my bad parents I, yeah my son had to have two neurological surgeries by the time he was um about five and a half months old they drained the fluid through an external vp shunt and uh a few weeks later i took my son for the checkup and they said um hey the fluid came back so we're gonna have to do another surgery and put an internal vp shunt and so I was like, well, why? And they're like, we don't know, but it's a chronic condition. So I'm like thinking, you know, if this was a chronic condition, why are they trying to say abuse when it, we know that it's not, but they're trying to say that. So um, if you, we fast forward a bit, um, longer, like a few months later, um, and mind you, my husband and I, we have clean records. My husband had a top secret government and military security clearance. 
as an optician in the optometrist's office, clean records, no prior CPS involvement, nothing. Um, so um, you, had another, you had another child already? No, we just, we had our first child and then this is our second child. So zero issues with your first child? Yeah, zero, zero issues with my first child. He is always very healthy. I like one of like, oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> and then, um, sorry if I get a little emotional with this part. No. Uh, a few months Sorry. later, they made up, they made up, uh, um, they just said, you know, the children are in immediate danger. Um, we have to go and take them. So, uh, that, that was the most heartbreaking time was when I had my baby and my four-year-old and they just, they just showed up and took them from me. Um, at your house? Yeah, they showed up at our house and they just knocked on the door and they just took them. They didn't give me a chance to, you know, give them anything. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm crying. <laughs> this is horrible. I'm not laughing. Is I'm just. It's just so crazy. I just like. I don't know what emotion to just like not scream. Yeah, and um, it it was just horrible. I had a cousin. I had a cousin with me, and I was I was just quiet and and honestly, I was just praying. I was like, God, please help me through this because it was just so heartbreaking. Um, we ended up taking my, my sons for five months and placing them into the foster care system. My oldest son lost 20 pounds and only six weeks of being taken. And I was told my baby had crawled in foster care and he, he was missing appointments. So, you know, he, as a parent. He was missing his appointments for his, his brain. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he had scheduled oh. appointments. Uh, he missed an appointment with his neurologist. And it was just it was just so frustrating because uh, when you know the state gets involved in everything, uh, those appointments could be easily missed, and I, I was just completely heartbroken. So we, we hired attorneys and we fought for our children. Uh, yeah. In five months, it took five months, and they only let us see them twice a week for two hours. So that it was just so devastating because Melda's son was four at the time, and he would cry all the time when we'd see him and, and just beg to come home. He's four years old and lost 20 pounds? 20 pounds in only six weeks. That's, that's a whole child. Yeah, and you know, they, they you know, um, it was traumatizing for the kids being taken and your, yeah. your old lost 20 pounds. And I was just, you know, all we could do is fight with our attorneys in court and you just keep going to court cases. Um, but thank God, you know, finally after five months, usually it takes a lot longer to get them back. They returned them because they saw how much it affected our children. <clears throat> um, they actually ended up wrongfully accusing my husband of two serious felonies. So they ended up charging him with those two felonies. So what not only two felonies, children, we had to fight for his innocence as well for two and a half years. He had to go to court. <clears throat> so when you say, okay, they, first they said your, your, your son's diagnosis was shaken baby, but then yeah. they take your children away. Yep. For months and months and months, they're in the care of who knows what, doing who knows what, not going to appointments, being traumatized in ways that probably you, you'll see effects of even years down the road. But then they charge your husband with a high-level military security clearance with two felonies. What yes. two felonies? Um, it was injury to a child. <clears throat> so they tried to say, they tried to say, we think the father shook the, the baby and we're just like, <clears throat> there's no way, there's no way. So it's really tough when you have one doctor trying to say something um, and you can't have a second opinion. So when I had, when I had my son's return to me, I was taking my son to all different types of doctors all throughout Texas, even in Oklahoma. I'm like, I need to figure out what his correct diagnosis is. So that way he can have the best. Possible. Yeah. And, he's know, he's still getting fluid on the brain. Mm -hmm. You know, you still yeah. need to figure out how to, how, what is wrong with your child. Exactly. There's still a very serious illness here. Yes. It's because he had CSF fluid and they found a little bit of blood. So they're like, oh my gosh, you know, we found a little blood. It's, it's automatically shaken baby syndrome, which that wasn't the case at all. Um, now, so you, had, you had said just a second ago, you weren't allowed to get a second opinion. Is mm -hmm. that, was, was that what you were told at the time? Is that the way the law is? Just explain that part. You're not yeah. allowed to get a second opinion? Yeah, the doctor told me, no, we don't feel that's necessary. And then there's no law, there, right? Well, there wasn't, there wasn't a law that allowed 
parents second opinions. You just had to go with this one doctor. Wow, that's insane. So, so okay, you have your children back. By no means is life wonderful. Your your husband has this these two felony work. charges against him. I'm sure that had to affect his employment. Yeah, he unfortunately lost his job, um, his top secret clearance. Um, and it was just, we had to uh, sell our house to pay for the mounting attorney fees. So we, we lost $80,000. We had to hire three attorneys, sell our house, um, which, you know, to me, as long as I have my kids back, and I'll, I'll look up everything. But it's just, yeah, it's it so, doesn't make it right. Of course, you're going to fight tooth and nail for your kids. And now you're fighting for your husband. You'll take the shirt off your back if you had to. Doesn't make it right. But okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> attorneys, you know, they're awesome, but, and you need them, but they're very expensive. You know, 80, like we lost $80,000 of attorney fees, um, medical insurance, because he lost his job. So we lost our medical insurance. And my son still had to go to his doctor's appointments. So for all that out of pocket, um, I was taking my son all over Texas. I took him to Fort Worth, Houston, even in Oklahoma. I was like, I need to figure out what, what his condition is. So I took him to another neurosurgeon, a neurologist, a rheumatologist, genetics. He saw a geneticist. So I was just like praying and I'm like, you know, I have to figure out what's really wrong with my son because he was never, honestly, like this is, it's just so crazy. So then um, my husband spent two and a half years, kept going to court, court to fight for his innocence. Um, they often try to get you to take a plea deal because, you know, they know that it costs a lot of money to hire your own attorneys and it's exhausting and stressful to keep fighting. They drag so, you out thinking they've got more money to spend and eventually you'll give up. Yeah. And I understand now why, you know, people take plea deals because like who has, you know, $15,000 to retain an attorney and keep paying them for years. Uh -huh. um, but everything got so much better after we hired our third attorney. Um, our third attorney said, Hey, let me look at the medical records. You'd be shocked at what you would find in there. So uh -huh. our and I looked at the medical records um, and he's like, hey, you know, I need, I need to meet with you. Come to my office. So we both went to his office and he looks at my husband. He's like, you know, I, I was a prosecutor and I've been in, in um, I've been an attorney for 30 years. You know, he's like, I don't know you very well, but uh, you are in fact innocent. <laughs> and we both look at each other. We're like, we know we've been, we've been trying to say this this whole time, you know, for like almost three years, two and a half three years. Like we've been saying this this whole time. Yeah. And he's like, Found it in the medical records um, about your son. He actually had a, a complication at birth and he has a condition called benign external hydrocephalus. And I was like, whoa, hydrocephalus. I didn't even really know what that was. And, and it's right in his records. Yes. It's the hospital place. knew it. The doctors knew it. Yeah. Well, I didn't, I didn't really know that part until about two years ago when I looked through his medical records so many times and there's huge binders that go, you know, records just yeah. hundreds, if not thousands of pages. And I was going through an MRI report of when it first started. And it actually says in the report, in the MRI report, when everything first started, um, protocol for hydrocephalus. And I was just shocked. And then, um, when you go through a situation, you feel so alone. I didn't know if anyone else was going through this. So I, joined all these groups and I found out that so many families are going through the same situation. Um, there was a reporter that did, or um, yeah, he, there's a reporter that did a series with NBC news and he did a year long investigation and he has a series called Do no harm. And he found that so many families are going through a similar situation and it, it's just completely like shocking. It's, it's happening all over the United States and even in other countries. Families that have contacted me from California, Arizona, Texas, many from Texas, Oklahoma, Florida, New York, all over. And I was just, I'm, I was just shocked. And, and, and this is, they're contacting you because their doctors or the hospital that their child went to is getting a misdiagnosis of the same thing or just a misdiagnosis period. And they're having a really hard time trying to figure out what's truly wrong. Both, both the same, the same uh, condition, but there's also other genetic conditions. Um, you know, they simply slip and fall, break a bone. They blame the parents. Um, there's genetic conditions called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome where babies can, bones can break easily. So it's just, and then my son, his neurological condition, it's just, it's so crazy because um, as a parent, you're just completely shocked. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. 
Well, this is the thing. So you have, you're on your third attorney. The third attorney looks at the medical records. I'm not going to assume that the first two should have. That's, that's already neither here nor there at this point. That's, that's why we have <laughs> Yeah, well, that's why you have three. Your third. So your third finds it in the medical records. Now, if it's in the medical records, it was put in there. Now, if it, this happened at birth, the doctors, nurses, whomever was part of that delivery was aware of this. So yes, that, they, did, they didn't tell you. That, yes, that's exactly also what happened. Um, the hospital that had my son at never told me anything. And I, I was just shocked because at the time I had a feeling something was a little off. They kept trying to keep us there longer than normal. They're like, hey, your son needs to see a pediatrician right away, like within a day or two. So I'm like, what, what was going on? You know, it, I just couldn't figure it out. And then years later, you know, I figure out like, oh my gosh, you know, they didn't tell us anything. This, was, you know, it was very dangerous for my son to have all this fluid accumulating in his head for like four and a half months, four, four and a half months. And we didn't know. What kind of doctors, nurses, what have you, there's clearly a lot of people involved in a delivery and, and, and they were procrastinating, probably, you know, monitoring your child. They know that they, he has this, this medical condition. They release you and your child knowing you have, a, he has a medical condition they have not told you about. So it sounds to me a little covering their ass for a medical uh, a malpractice lawsuit was more important to them than the health of the baby they just brought into the world. Yes, that, that's what's so heartbreaking about the situation. And also the same with the other children's hospital, like, hey, you know, let's, let's say that this really happened when they knew it didn't. Um, and it's just completely traumatizing for the whole family, especially the children. Yeah, all these conditions, children could die. Yeah. But they're worried about a malpractice <laughs> lawsuit. That's disgusting. Yeah. And it's, it's just so concerning as well, because by the time families go through this horrible situation, um, there's a short two year statute of limitations because so many people are like, Hey, how come you can sue? You know, there's a very short two and a half, two year statute of limitations. And it took me two and a half years to get my son correctly diagnosed and to go through family court and criminal court. And it's just, you know, trauma, the trauma from my kids being taken. It was just a horrible situation. But I, I have to say that if it's, it's, if it's a two and a half year statute of lim or two year statute of limitations and somehow you're correctly diagnosed and the lawsuits uh, against you and all the claims against you go away in two and a half years. That's not a coincidence. They stalled. Yeah. Yeah. The case against my husband kept being um, postponed. <clears throat> so, you know, we figure out that part, but then after we figure out, you know, the short two year statute limitations, it makes a lot of sense. And I actually was, ah. so after and I took a little time to try to just heal from the emotional trauma. Um, I wrote a book and that's also part of the healing process is, you know, to talk about it, to write about it. Um, it was very tough for me to write the book because honestly, there were times that I had to go into detail about my kids being taken. I was, you know, I was crying as I was writing, but it's like, it's, it's also like a healing type of a, a thing to do that's healthy. It's healthy. And um, I wrote my book, Miracles of Faith, to try to bring hope and strength to other families that could be going through a similar situation or just oh, any challenging in general. Um, so Miracles of Faith, it was a great memoir that I wrote. And um, I, I did publish that one. I, I wrote another book, but I haven't published it yet because my family and friends and people I know, they're like, you need to write a second one because you know so much has happened after this fact. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'll write another one. I just haven't had it published yet. But um, I also was meeting with lawmakers, I had many meetings with senators, state representatives, our mayor, and um, I was invited to one of the state representatives at the Capitol building in Austin, Texas. And, you know, I had a meeting with him and I was like, look, this is what happened in many families, many throughout Texas and all the United States are saying that they're going through a similar situation. You know, laws need to be changed to protect the children and families. Yeah. So it was, he was just like, yes, I, I'm aware of this, you know, NBC News, the, the reporter with NBC News has also reached out to us. We're working on changing laws. So then he called me a few weeks later and he's like, hey, can you speak at a legislative hearing at the Capitol building? And I was like, yes, you know, definitely. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. So other, other families that I know as well that have been through that similar situation uh, went and shared their testimonies as well. And it took about two and a half 
years or so, or maybe two years um, of fighting for changes, but finally they just passed the law um, that will hopefully help prevent other children and families from going through a similar, similar situation in Texas recently. And they're working on more laws. So it's, it's very, um, if you just get like a sigh of relief that finally changes are happening and I just don't want any other children and families to have to go through such a traumatic, horrible situation when it could have been prevented many times. Oh, absolutely. So what is the new law? Um, the new law, it, it allows a second opinion, actually. So they can have... It's amazing very- that you have to have a law for that, but thank God you now, <laughs> people do. It's- thank you, Lorena. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, also thank you to the families that have been fighting as well. When when we meet with lawmakers and we, we voice our opinions and we fight for changes, it can happen. It takes time. You know, sometimes it can take a few years, but finally we're starting to see some changes happen. So it's been awesome. It's been That's quite fantastic. Good. Yeah. So this, this law actually allows a second opinion from a non-affiliated um, medical expert. So they, they could be a medical expert that is not funded through the state, which, you know, it's kind of concerning that the state has their own um, medical expert that they fund, but the parents yeah. can't. But now, thank God, the laws have changed where the parents can, and they have to listen to both sides, you know, like the other medical expert as well. That's fantastic. It seems like a no-brainer, but, you know, at least the law's there now. Yes, for sure. And so going through this type of a situation, um, I, I was just like uh, thinking, you know, focusing on health and wellness. And that's why I wanted to bring out my natural products because, you know, health and wellness is so important. Just wellness, health, and beauty. And um, ever since my son's misdiagnosis, I'm like, hey, I want, I want to eat healthier, I want to exercise. You know, it's a whole mind and body and soul. You know, we've got to be healthy, um, especially, you know, to care for our children and our families. 100%. So, so you've, you, you have your kids back. Your, your, the case against your, the felonies against your husband, have, have those been dropped? Yeah, yes. It took two and a half years, but they, they dismissed that case. Um, the judge and everyone in the prosecutor were just quiet and they just said, okay, we'll, we'll dismiss this case. Thank God. And now you're, you have this product line, your, your, your family unit is back together. Are you, are you starting to start to, you know, see the real light at the end of the tunnel now, now that, you know, the charges are dropped? I'm sure you're still an uphill battle, but are you starting to feel that you're, you know, you're getting there? Yes. Yes. Everything got much better in 2018. Um, but it's, it, you know, it takes time to heal. There's families that have shared their testimonies at legislative hearings you know, that have been through this 10 years ago and they're still crying about it too. It's just the emotional trauma that goes with, you know, being a parent and just having your baby just taken from you. The trauma takes years to heal from. I, I, I can't I imagine. I have two and um, they, ha- they had jaundice when they were born. So my first, my your first baby, I couldn't even come home from the hospital with him. He had to stay to, you know, work out the, the jaundice issues. I was there back, you know, hands-on mom right there in the hospital, but I couldn't leave with my child. And I, I'm going to cry. I'm 51 years old and I'll never forget that feeling of, of being so far away from my baby and I couldn't bring him home. I could not, could not imagine the feeling of watching complete strangers steal, and I'll call it stealing, steal my baby away because someone else was lying. I, I don't know how people do that. Yeah, it was it was a horrible, horrible experience. Like I, I literally just fell to the ground and was, and was crying. I just, and then to see the, the car, you know, drive off of my kids and not knowing where Strange. they're going to be with was so heartbreaking. And, and what about your other child? Uh, have you, did that child come through the whole foster care okay? Are you seeing any repercussions? Um, has he, has he been able to, is he, I'm not sure if it was the boy or girl or what, what the age of your children are able my to son. heal? Yeah, it, it took a while. Um, my oldest son, uh, they said that he showed san- signs of sadness and depression in his medical records. I went and got his medical records because they wouldn't tell me anything. So um, the foster parent took him to the, the children's hospital for, you know, for a checkup. 
And in those records, um, the pediatrician wrote, the, this child is showing signs of sadness and depression from being separated from their biological parents. And I made sure that I spoke about that in the legislative hearing as well, because, you know, the trauma on the children, you know, everything is like, we're, we're trying to do what's best for the children and everything like that. Well, the trauma from being taken from your parents and out of your home and placed with strangers in foster care. And sometimes, you know, children are being hurt in foster care, which is very concerning. Yeah. It's just so concerning. You know, it, it's, it makes you question, like, are they really doing what's best for the children? So that's why um, the lawmakers now, senators and state representatives in Texas are very aware that this is a huge problem. So they're trying to prevent wrongful removals. But it's, you know, they, they've told me, you know, it, it takes time. You know, it could take a few years or even longer, unfortunately. But if we keep working together and fight for changes, changes can happen. Just like recently, there's some laws that have been passed in Texas to hopefully prevent this from happening. And they're working on more, too, which is great. Fantastic. Go Texas. And the media also helps um, getting our stories in the media and the news. It helps add steam and traction to those much needed changes because if people don't know this is a huge problem, how are we going to fix it? So that's why I'm also grateful towards the media that they did share our story um, with the Today Show, with People Magazine, um, with NBC News Nationwide. Our story went nationwide in 2019 as well. I met with a national reporter for one of my meetings in, at, the, at a federal building in California. And it was great that she actually shared our story and it went uh, to news stations all over nationwide. Fantastic. So that raised that awareness. Oh, I just, I feel for you. I feel for all the other families out there that are going through this, that are, that have been through it and now are dealing with the aftermath. Is, is, is there, Anything being done to the people who, number one, never told you about your son's diagnosis at birth when they knew it, and the two, the people who willingly and knowingly lied, is there anything being done to those people? Um, unfortunately, the many parties are involved and nothing ever happened. So they're just they're out there still practicing, still lying, still not telling parents when their child is has a condition at birth, still getting children removed from homes, falsifying for, like corruption and greed. It's Falsify. they're still doing it. Yeah, falsifying documents, lying to the judge. There's so much, so much involved in malpractice. Um, unfortunately, there's so many laws and immunities that protect them. That's why I've been told many times uh, in the short two-year statute of limitations. So it's it's very concerning. I actually called the hospitals to try to arrange meetings. Um, with the presidents, but unfortunately, those haven't gone through yet. So it's, you know, it's it's a battle. But hopefully, we could get some changes because people have been. You've been. You would be shocked. Like people that contact me that are going through this too. And um, there's this one family. They're like, we are completely shocked because we are in the medical system as well, and we can't believe that this is happening to us. Engineers, people in the military, um, teachers, nurses, EMTs. It's just the list goes on. Like, it doesn't matter what nationality you are, which career you have, it could happen to anybody. Even doctors, this is happening to a doctor in his own hospital, and it's completely shocking. I, let me tell you, I have no background in this. Thank God something like this hasn't happened to me, and I'm just going to give you my opinion on this. It's greed. It's greed because it's money, and when your do your hospital is found to have a malpractice lawsuit that, that you they actually get found guilty of, they get less money. It's all about money. So the hospital is gonna support the doctor that, or the nurse or, or the group of them that did something wrong. They're gonna sweep it under the rug because it's gonna affect their pocket. And that's yeah. disgusting. I don't know how these people live with themselves. You are lying out of greed. What kind of human being does that? Yeah, and I was concerned too, because I'm, I was thinking um, the medical expert actually wrote you know, he's like, this is not a, con this is not a rare condition. You know, neurologists and neurosurgeons, they know about this condition. And he even wrote that this is malpractice. Like any doctor, he wrote like any doctor that agreed with non accidental trauma or anything like that is guilty. Of and he even said that. And he's very upset because he sees cases like this all the time, unfortunately. There's just no excuse. There's, I, I don't want to, all right, I'm not going to rant, rant, rave. I'm just so angry that this was done and, and, and it was done on purpose. That's just, 
it's just wrong. Yeah. Ah, uh, well. And yeah. that's why I, I was just frustrated and angry too. And you know, there's it's just so much of emotion. It's a roller coaster, roller coaster of emotions because you're going to court, things look okay, and then things look really bad, and it's just like so much stress and trauma on the families. And that's why I fight for these families and have met with over ten lawmakers, you know, to to have changes made because. I asked, you know, the senators and state representatives, I'm like, hey, do you know that this is happening? And they're like, honestly, we don't, you know, that, well, the state or other state representative did, but most of them were like, we honestly don't know that this is happening. So when families contact me, I'm like, hey, make sure you reach out to your senators, senators and state representatives and let them know this is happening because we need to work together and fight for changes. It's not okay. Yeah. Like, Yeah, and change doesn't uh, happen when you write one email or one letter keep mm -hmm. going don't yeah. give up make so much damn noise they have to listen to you yeah that's what i had to do i had to just keep you know scheduling meetings my story is getting in the media it just and then working with other families too them sharing their stories it was just it's a long journey but thank god we're finally seeing some changes after a few years and thank with my gosh. the other thing too is when people are wrongfully accused of abusing a child and and they're wrong like it, it didn't really happen my husband lost his top secret government and security clearance it was never reinstated and it's going to stay on his record for 10 years so his attorney said it's going to take 10 years to get this off your record and that's completely like unacceptable like how how someone that... gets to lie about your husband they get off scot-free yeah. he loses his job and has a record now for 10 years years even though he's been found completely innocent of this that's just not right and when i when i shared that at the legislative hearing like the state representative he's just like he you could see his reaction too is just like oh my gosh you know, laws yeah. need to be that as well it, it's just not okay no it's not it's not okay well i'm i'm glad that texas is stepping up and 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 making changes little by little to try to make sure that this uh, this doesn't happen again, and hopefully these people who are doing this have some type of accountability, so they stop doing it. But I, I I'm just I'm thankful for your family, Lorena. That that you're together, you're getting healthy, you're rebuilding. I am so proud to to know somebody who fought so hard and is continuing to fight and, and and guide other parents and other families that are going through this you're a remarkable remarkable woman um and i i, I hope in in some way shining confidence just podcasted something to to maybe inform a family that's going through this that didn't know they had a, a, an avenue to go to, to just to let them know that they're not alone and and give them hope to keep fighting if, if, if that's all i can do i will just keep doing that because this is i just want to you know we all have to help each other out there we have to have each other's backs and you know we just just need more power <laughs> yeah when we work together and support each other so much can be done like i i'm just so amazed that these laws are finally finally been passed and just working together with other families has been great you know i, I got to meet some incredible people as well through this uh, amazing <laughs> and challenging journey at first but I and then the family, people don't realize when you go through a situation families are having to claim bankruptcy they're having ptsd um it's just they're losing everything and it, just to rebuild and heal from all the trauma it takes years and a lot of sometimes trauma trauma like this it destroys the marriage and and that's just a lifelong something you deal with forever especially with children because then now you have two families you're you and your husband must be incredibly strong and very much in love that you fought this together and still are because that's that's a tremendous battle it's in and of itself yeah there was there was a time where we did have to take a little bit of break it just it did really affect you know everything just yeah. everything and that's and no that's nothing wrong with either one of you that's just natural yeah, but we came back even stronger. We took time to heal and work on our own things and um, just healing through the whole situation. Now we're stronger and we're doing very well. My kids are healthy and happy. And my oldest, he's 11 now. And my ba my baby that they took a time, he's he's six, he's gonna be seven. So it's just so awesome to see them, you know, heal and do so much better now than 
when they were in that situation because you know oh, my yeah. oldest even smiling that was I was so concerned because I'm like he's like a different kid he's so sad I could tell but thank God um they noticed after he was brought home to us you know like within like a week or two he's just like so happy and doing so well gaining weight again so I feel yeah the pictures of you with your with your with your family they are adorable and everybody looks very happy <laughs> thank you thank you and that's the most important thing is you know I'm so glad that my son's are healthy um my baby that had the birth injury he's doing better he's doing well now he still has the internal bp shunt he might have that for life but thank god he's doing so much better thank, oh, thank you for giving us that update that's fantastic thank you and birth injuries are very common i don't think people are aware but they're very common and there could be thousands of birth injuries throughout the united states and you know that's what concerns me i'm like i don't want more families to go through this situation so that's why we keep fighting for changes and and we have so many support groups for the families too that I'm also a part of so many groups online, people that are going through a similar situation. It's awesome and so important to have that support. Yeah, it's, it's, it has to be a, a tremendous amount of uh, encouragement to know you're not alone. So yeah. um, I will get all of those links from you and put them in the show notes so anybody watching this if they need that support group you'll just be a click away and 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 trying to find some help and support awesome thank you i really appreciate that a family just contacted me um a few days ago as well and she's like you know i'm sorry <laughs> i just i read your story and you know we're going through a similar situation i'm devastated because my daughter's going through this and she's pregnant so we're really worried and she was her daughter is actually um you know whole family is going through a similar situation so you know, I was like, it's okay, you know, hopefully by sharing my story, you know, something that I went through or something that happened, you know, can hopefully help their situation. 100%. And it's bad things happen in this world. It's just a fact. And a lot of people, you know, when you're going through something awful, your situation, or even any other situation, you're not alone. You would, the, millions of people are, are, are going through something as well so always reach out always try to talk to somebody don't suffer alone that you don't need to ever suffer alone and you don't need to suffer you just reach out there's support groups there's numbers you can call there's there's doctors out there that can help you and guide you into you know giving you the skills and 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 information to help you get through whatever it is that you're going through in your life right now but don't ever try to battle it alone um, there's yeah. strength in numbers, there's strength in support, there's there, that is not a weakness to new so, soldiers to lean on, lean on them, that there, these groups are out there to help you. Yes. And you know, one of the things I grew up with three older brothers, so <laughs> it's always like, be tough, just deal with it. You know, don't cry, it shows weakness. And yeah. so I was like, just trying to hold everything in, but we have to talk about it. We, that's the part of healing is talking about it and healing through it you can't bottle it all up inside because it gets worse over time. So I, you know, it's so important to take the steps to get, to, to heal from everything instead of keeping it all bottled up inside. Yeah, and, and you need those numbers, you need that support to find out that there's other people going through it with you to make the changes, to not just suffer and then move on, to make the change so it stops that cycle. Yes, and th I'm so thankful that we had so much love and support from all our family and friends too. That was huge. It made a huge difference. And that some, had to have been. Yes, and by praying and faith, it really helped get our situation um, turned around for the better. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, how do we turn this horrible situation into the positive? How do we turn it into good? And to try to help other people, that's the main thing. And you know, I really care about the children that are going through this as well. All the other children and the families. It's just so heartbreaking, but. Hopefully, it can get better for them as well. Absolutely, Lorena, you're you're just incredible, and 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 you you said you're you have a, another book coming out, so we can get an update on you and your family. Is is there a date for that? Uh, I'm still working out on the details. I, I already finished writing it a little while ago. I just the whole publishing process it's it's a process, so it's, I'm just like trying to figure out when the time is, but. Yeah, I'll definitely be publishing my second book. It's going to be Miracles of Faith Part 2 because this one talks about the misdiagnosis and how my son got quickly diagnosed. Um, and it pretty much kind of end, ended there as a memoir. It's like a shorter shorter ver version of, because everyone's so busy, I wanted to write like a shorter book that people could read 
and wouldn't take too long. Um, the second book will be a little bit, a little bit more long because there's so much stuff that happened in the process, but um, hopefully our story can help other families and children. Yes. So yeah, when you have that date or 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 it's the, the when it's been released, please, please contact me. I will push that out as well. So the anybody watching now um will be able to see that there's an update and and you can continue, you know, following Lorraine and her story and 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 her children and see how they're all doing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yes. And again, the, this goes back to your candles, your product line. All the stuff that you did that we started the show with, just how remarkable they are knowing what you've been through and, and how you are still, whether it be, you know, talking at state capitals, writing books, uh, talking at support groups, making products, you're still just paying every bit of goodness forward. And there's not many Lorenas out there. You should be, it's just, you're incredible. Thank you. I, I really genuinely care about people and I love that um, we've, we, our business focuses on wellness, beauty and health. And I just would love to bring, you know, more like healthy, natural candles and skincare and cosmetics to other people because I've been trying them too and I just love it. And it's been also like a healing journey for me as well through my healing journey. I love candles. They help me relax, especially at night after a stressful day. Light a candle, watch comedy, have my electric fire, electric fireplace. <laughs> and then, you know, as a busy mom, I love having my candle lit and my own skincare. And I love the mask too. But we have a pineapple and papaya mask. It smells amazing. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, it smells so good. I want to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your mask put on real light. And it's, it's fun. Your kids help you with the scents. It's a family, you know, it's a family affair. You know, you, you just, it's just fun. It's just great to just see you smile, see the photos of your kids smiling. Uh, doing something good for your family, doing something good for the environment, doing something good for other families. That's, that's just great. It's just a great, happy ending. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, my kids, they love helping with scents. My son, because I, I have like the whole fall candle line right here as well. And my son was like, ooh, he's like, I really love this blue one. <laughs> and he's like, I really love the, pink, the pumpkin one. So we're just waiting on the labels. They should be here anytime now for the rest of them. And it's, it's like them happy and smiling. And that's why I love our products too is, it brings smiles and happiness to people. It's it's just a, a nice thing with everything going on in the world, the pandemic and all that stuff. And, you know, people have to stay home more. So this is a great way to relax, de-stress and rejuvenate. And just smile. So, <laughs> yes, just so important for our health. Uh, I have to say, Lorena, thank you so much for, for taking the time, even on an intro call to talk to me. And I know I kept you on the phone probably far longer than you wanted to be. You were incredible to meet. I'm glad I finally get to virtual face-to-face -face, face -face meet you. I'm glad for everybody that's had a chance or an opportunity to hear about your product line, your candles, your story, because even if they're not going through it, they might have a friend that's going through it. And somehow I just know in my heart that this is going to pay it forward and help another family down the road somewhere at some, at some point. And, and if I can help connect that to just bring happiness to somebody else through a candle or through your story and not to give up and always have hope and know that there are miracles of faith. Um, it's, it's an honor. It's an honor to have been able to learn this from you, share it, and um, just, just know you. You're an incredible woman. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And like you said, by just sharing our story, uh, my cousin, she's an attorney in, for the city of Los Angeles. And she was just like, she contacted me about a year or two ago. And she's like, hey, my friend, that's a, she's a teacher. She's going through a similar situation. And I was just like, oh my gosh. So I reached out to her and I was like, hey, um, you know, what's going on? And I shared what we went through and hopefully what could help her. So it's, cra it's so crazy that it happened to my cousin's friend. And I was just like, wow. Uh. And in, Oh, and also there's a, an American Idol star. Um, they actually wrongfully took her children as well recently in Florida. Oh my gosh, is she, does she, is she still fighting to get them back? Um, they actually returned her baby, but they still have her toddler. So she's still fighting. And it happened from a hospital too. Did she, I believe the story is that um, her baby wasn't getting enough fluids, so she took him to the hospital and then um, they just made wrongful accusations and they took her children. She got her baby back, but she's still fighting for her toddler. And this this is an American Idol star, so it's, it's just shocking too that 
you know, like I was saying, it could happen to anybody at any time. So raising that awareness, sharing your stories is so important because, you know, yeah. even in general, we all go through tough situations in life, whether it's this or anything else. And just being there for each other and talking to each other and being that support system is so important. Wow. Wow. Well, I certainly hope she continues fighting like you did and gets her other child back. I certainly only pray for the best on that. Um, and anybody else out there, just my prayers are strong and long. Thank you. That's what's so important. We've been praying for them as well. It's, it's such a battle, but hopefully things will get better. Yeah. That's why I, my book of miracles of faith, because with faith, miracles can happen. It smells like miracles of faith would be a great. 100%. Great. You're, you're a perfect example. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Lorena. Again, keep us posted on your products, on your books. Um, I'm definitely going to look into that American Idol story um, and, and, and link all of you up to that. I'm sure she could use a ton of support right now as well, her and her family. Um, I can't thank you enough. I know it's a Sunday, so I want you to get back to your family, your husband. I don't want to take any more of your time. I'm so appreciative of, of the time that you did take to speak with us, to speak with the viewers, share your story. Uh, the world is better for it, and I truly appreciate it, Lorna. I truly do. Thank you so much. Thank you for, so much for having me on your show, too. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. It's time for Style Secrets. I love this part. In Style Secrets, what I do is I pay forward something I've seen, used, something my friends have used, something my friends have seen that we love so much that we want to share it with other people so that they can experience it the way we did. And Lorena, the guest today, she has a company called Pure by Lorena. Now, this came about about five years ago. She started working in her kitchen doing healthy uh, cosmetics and candles with soy because she saw that the candles that she had in her house weren't making her feel so good. And she just wanted to go really, really natural for her family and be healthier all around. So she came up with Pure by Lorena. And I was so lucky that she sent me candles, facial cleanser, mask, moisturizer, lip gloss, chapstick, and I've used all of it. And it is fantastic. The candle that she sent me, which you see behind me, smells fabulous, Maui Beach Sunset. I highly suggest it. So today, our Style Secrets is Pure by Lorena.